Welcome back to Creative View Chronicles, the show where I document the entire journey of creating my indie app, Creative View. And in this episode, we're gonna talk about dog fooding and my task tracking or bug tracking for the software. But first, I wanna start off with an update to the LLC stuff. I won't bore you with all the details, so I'll give you kind of the highlights, but the whole process took about two weeks. I had to get an EIN number, and then Apple requires a DUNS number. Again, this whole process, it was my first time doing it, so maybe I was a little slower. I was kind of learning the ropes, but I wanna share that information in case you're doing something similar. I kind of budget, you know, about two weeks to, to get all that taken care of. And that two weeks was important because that kind of delayed me two weeks because my app is relying on CloudKit and you can't use CloudKit until you have a developer account. And I couldn't get my Creator View developer account until I had my LLC, right? There's a whole chain of events. I believe I've talked about that before. But that whole thing took about two weeks and delayed me building the CloudKit uh, persisting functionality in my app, which is also what held me up from dog fooding, which is the topic of this video. Dog fooding, what the hell is that? Have you ever heard of that? Some of you probably have, but I'm guessing most of you haven't. So it's a startup-y buzzword, basically to use your own product. So for example, let's say when Slack was building Slack uh, in their offices, they were probably using Slack to communicate to each other while they were building it. It's called dog fooding. It's like being your own beta tester. So naturally me building the product for myself, essentially like, yeah, I'm gonna dog food the product. So that means that after I got my core data cloud kit all set up, I imported all my data from my spreadsheet into the app and started actually tracking my business on the app, like actually using the product with all of its bugs and UI flaws and all. So that's the concept of dog fooding. That's what it means. I'm gonna back up to that core data cloud kit piece because that took me about two weeks as well because I've been doing this iOS development stuff for like six or seven years now and I've managed to dodge core data my whole career. Like all the other apps I worked on had, had a backend server that that held all the data. So I just had to make network API calls. Well, this is the first time where I'm using like core data and syncing to CloudKit. So I had to learn core data from scratch. So that's why I was moving a little slow. Cause as you saw in previous videos, you know, the UI was already built. I was using dummy data. It looked like it was ready to work. But if you're a developer, you know, using dummy data and just building the UI, that's like not even half the battle, right? Getting everything working properly with data entry, saving it to core data, persisting it in the cloud kit, like that took a long time, again, about two weeks. And it was a little slower because again, I was learning core data as I went. So I started dog fooding the app around the second week of September. I believe the previous videos were like later in August. Uh, but yeah, second week of September, I actually started dog fooding the app where I was like actually using it on my iPad. Not this one, this is the iPad mini. It, ugh. You seen the screenshots, like that spreadsheet view, getting it on the iPad mini, I'm dreading that, it's gonna be rough. That might be a whole video in and of itself. I haven't done it yet, but uh, it's gonna be rough. Anyway, what I realized when dog fooding was not great, um, I realized I don't even use my own app. That's alarming <laughs> because uh, really, well, it's, it's kind of, it was kind of known, but not, you know, it made me feel worried to be honest with you because I am not like an iPad person. Yes, I'm using it now because it has my notes for this video on it, but I use it very situationally. I'm definitely not the iPad as a computer guy. Like I always, if I'm sitting on my couch watching TV, like I got my laptop, right? I'm a laptop person. I like the typing experience there. So, Anytime I update my business numbers and stuff like that, I already got my laptop in front of me or I'm sitting at the iMac over there. And it's just easy to just like open up my spreadsheet and type in the numbers. So what I realized, I had to like force myself to use the iPad to enter my data. And it made me realize how important the Mac app is, at least to me. And like, if you've seen the previous videos, I said my audience is super narrow, right? Content creators that are making a living off their YouTube channel that are iPad first computer people, right? I've said that before. So this was known, but I guess it like really just shook me when I was like, man, I don't even use my own app. It's that cumbersome. Like I need the Mac app. So that was a scary revelation. And I, I'm still gonna launch iPad only in the beginning because that was the plan. Like this is nothing new. Like I, I don't know why I'm like freaking out about it. It's not, nothing super new. So that's still the plan. I just think the Mac app might come earlier than I expected because that'll just make me feel good, right? It'll calm me down. So overall, I would say the dog fooding, um, it was good for, you know, I got to like feel the pain of entering all the data uh, on a spreadsheet or the way at least I have my data entry right now, which as you can see, by the way, don't judge the designs. These are just hacky prototypes to, for me to like get something working and start like polishing it from there. Uh, so it looks ugly, I get it. But you know, I just kind of, I don't know, I gotta like rethink the data entry. It felt very cumbersome, but this is what dog fooding is for, right? Using it like an actual user would, and you start to see all the flaws very quickly. Like what are the annoying things, that kind of stuff. 
So while I'm doing this dog fooding right, I'm taking notes frantically, like in, my, in my, my notes app here, and so much so that the notes app got out of control. So I decided to start using some tracking software. If you're a software developer, maybe you've heard of like Jira, Notion, like a lot of these things are, I mean, there's other ones too. Um, I decided to go with Trello, mainly because it's kind of like a transition thing. You know, if I do bring on another developer, like I mentioned in a previous video, or a team starts to go around it, of course, we'll have to go to a more robust version. But for me, right now, solo developer, this early in production, you know, this Trello board uh, worked out for me. And really, I just needed to organize the thoughts, right? Each card isn't a task. Like, that's how you're supposed to use Trello, right? Like, each card's a task, and then you move it, like, Kanban style across into the done pile kind of thing. I'm really just using each card as, like, a, the title of a to-do list. So each card holds a to-do list, and that just basically helps me organize my thoughts. Because, like I said, as I was dog fooding, like, there was, you know, bugs, UI polish, feature ideas, you know, all kinds of things start coming into your head when you're actually using your product like a user would. So that's the update with dog fooding and task tracking. Let's talk about where I'm at in the timeline. It is now early October. I think last time I did these videos, it was late August. So there's a nice chunk in between. So like what happened during that chunk? Well, like I said, I was building out the actual functionality with Core Data and CloudKit, but I got derailed for like three weeks because I was updating all of my iOS developer courses for iOS 15. Again, iOS 15 came out late September, it was official. So I had to record and create like 25 to 30 videos, you know, for all of those courses. Not 25 to 30 for each course, but total videos for all the courses I did, about 30 videos, I would guess. Uh, so it was very time consuming. So that I haven't touched Creator View in three weeks at this point, but now that my course updates are live, that's all behind me. Now I'm shifting back into Creator View. But I, I, to be honest, I got into a little bit of a funk. I don't know, this happens like once every year for me, where I'll just go to a funk where I just don't feel like working, don't feel like doing anything. I think it's the whole like, working on your own business, working from home by yourself. Uh, I don't have a car yet. That's a whole another story. Maybe I'll tell that one day, not on this series, but I don't know, somewhere on my socials. So, you know, I live in a downtown city. I can walk everywhere, Uber places. I have everything I need, but not having a car still kind of makes you feel trapped. Like I can't like get out and go and adventure somewhere. So uh, I needed to kind of get away for a little bit, kind of get a change of scenery. So I am going back home to friends and family, stay there for a few weeks. So if you do see future Creator View update videos that are in a different setting than this and looks like I'm just recording it from my phone, that's why I'm on my little sabbatical. I do plan on working on a lot of Creator View there, and the launch may even happen while I'm away on this trip. So we'll see. Again, you'll be getting videos uh, as that happens. But anyway, that's the dog fooding video. If you've never heard that concept, it's super useful when you're building a product. And then, like I said, here's how I'm tracking my tasks using Trello just to really compartmentalize my ideas. And then I gave you the timeline update. Uh, so I'll see you probably in a few weeks with some cell phone videos, uh, hopefully talking about the launch.